Right, we're going to take a look at uh, different types of graphs, their domain and range, and then how we can actually verify some of this stuff on our graphing calculator um, to kind of start using it to, to find characteristics of things without having to graph by hand. Um, so this guy right here, first of all, we're going to run through here, and what we're going to talk about is what would be considered the parent functions. That's not how you spell functions. Parent functions. And so these are kind of like the bare, the the bare minimum, the, the basic function. And so this guy right here would be y equals x. And remember, each one of these has arrows in the end. And so what that's saying is that from here, we could add numbers on the front. We could add numbers on the back. So like, for example, we could say y equals 2x plus 3. And the 3 would have an effect on the graph, and the 2 would have an effect on the graph. But that's not what we're worried about right now. This is just the parent function. It creates a straight line. This guy is called a linear function. Next one up is going to be y equals x cubed. In this case right here, we call this a cubic function. Remember those arrows are on there, they go on forever. This, these two guys are inverses of each other, and this is called a cube root. This would be y equals the cube root of x. Okay, so really there's no name for that one, a cube root. The names aren't that important, it's just vocabulary. And we'll come back to this page in just a second. Move to this guy over here, and this guy ends up being a y equals x squared. This is called a quadratic. The inverse of that is um, called a square root. So this would be the square root of x. So that would be a square root function. This guy right here is actually going to be, um, it would be x squared is equal to y is what he ended up being. Um, and so when you solve that, or when you, excuse me, I got that backwards. Um, got my square in the wrong spot. It would be x equals y squared. So when you solve that, what, what would end up happening is, is you would get plus or minus the square root of x is equal to y. And that's why we get one on top and one on the bottom. The next one would be y equals the absolute value of x, and that would be an absolute value function. But the real intentions of this activity aren't necessarily to go through and to name them, but more importantly, is, is, and I would write each one of those down as you're going, but then we're going to add more to it. The real conversation is about the domain and the range. So remember our domain discusses our x values, and let's do this. Let's make a little note right here. So our domain, our domain are our x values. Our domain is our input. Our domain is our independent variable. Independent. And what else? X vari values, input, independent variables. That'll work for now. All right, our range is going to be our y values. That's our output. That's our dependent, dependent variable. All right. So as we go through here, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and identify the domain and range. So I'm going to just use D for my domain and then R for range. So the way that I do this is I take a look at I start I start at the origin. So I come here and I and I talk about it like as though I'm standing here. So I'm standing at the origin. If I look off to the left, if I look this way, that's going towards negative infinity on the x-axis. Well, as I look out towards negative infinity, I can see that my graph is going on forever. So even though my graph is coming down, my domain is going out. So my domain will go all the way to negative infinity. I come back to the origin. I turn around. I look the other way. So as I'm looking out towards positive infinity, I say to myself, can I see my graph? And I sure can. Even though my graph is going up, it's coming out also at the same time. So my domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. We take a look at my range. In my range, we do the same thing. I go to my origin, I take a look, and I look down. So as I'm looking down towards negative infinity, I can see that off to my side here, I can see my graph is coming down also. Even though it's still going out, it's coming down. So my range will go to negative infinity. I come back to my origin, I turn around, I look up. And same thing. As I'm looking up, I see my graph continuing up, 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 and forever and ever. And so my domain and my range would be considered negative infinity to positive infinity. 
Now that's also known as um, all real numbers, but when you put this into my math lab, this is what they're going to want you to put in. We take a look at the domain on this guy. So once again, we come back to our origin. We look off to our negative infinity on the x-axis. And we say to ourselves, okay, well, as I'm looking out, I mean, I see out of the corner of my eye, I see my graph is coming down, but is it still coming out? And the answer is yes. Even though this graph comes down very quickly, it's also ever so gradually coming out. So ever so gradually, it'll keep on coming out and out and out. So my domain will go to negative infinity. I go back to my origin. I look the other way towards positive infinity. And I say, oh, look, yeah, my graph's going up really fast, but it's also, it's still coming out. See, I mean, it's still gradually coming out. So it'll go to positive infinity. Same conversation occurs with my range. I go back to my origin. I look down and say, yeah, clearly this thing is going to negative infinity. I mean, it's, it's going down. I turn around. I look up. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's definitely, even though it's come out just a little bit, it's definitely going up. So once again, all real numbers. The last one, hopefully you can see this. We won't have to as, say as much about this one. In this case here, negative infinity to positive infinity because I look off here. It keeps on going. It keeps on going. I do my range. In my range, same thing. Even though it goes up slowly, even though it comes down slowly, even though it goes up slowly, it's still coming down and it's still coming up. So my domain and range will also be um, all reals. Now what I want you to pay attention here before we move on to the next screen is, is this is a first degree, this is a third degree, and that's a third root. Those are all odds. Odd degree functions will have a domain and range that it's all real numbers. So these are all odd degree functions. So when you come across an odd degree function, you can guarantee yourself that your domain and range is going to be all reals for both of them. As we turn the page, just to kind of hold that concept and carry on, here, these would all, well, not all of them, these would be considered even degree functions. Excuse me, even degree. They're not functions because the vertical line test. So these are even degree except for the absolute value. Okay, so um, so as we look at this guy, we'll, we'll make, see that, that conclusion here and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So same thing, we got our domain. So we start at the origin, we look off to the left towards negative infinity, and yep, I'm going out for sure. And as I go out, I can look up and see that my graph is, keeps on coming out. So my domain would be from negative infinity. I turn back from the origin, I look the other way, it would be positive infinity. And hopefully at this point, maybe you've hit pause, and you're doing this on your own, and then you're just kind of going back and watching the video to see if your answers match mine. Now... The thing about an even degree function is it does have a restriction. It has a restriction on one of them. So in this case right here, if I go to my origin and I look down, I don't see anything. I don't see my graph. But if I turn around, I look up, my graph goes forever. So I'm definitely going to positive infinity. But the question is, is where do I start? Well, I'm touching that point right there, and that point right there is 0, 0. So my range starts at 0, touches 0, so I actually include as a bracket using my interval notation. When I take a look at this guy right here, we do my domain, same concept. I stand here at the origin, I look to the left, and I don't see anything. I stand at the origin, I look to the right, it goes on forever. So I'm definitely going to positive infinity, but the question is, where do I start? Well, that ordered pair right there is 0, 0. So my domain starts at 0 and goes to positive infinity. My range. My range, same concept. I look, stand at the origin, I look down, I see nothing. I turn around, I look up. Even though as I look up, it's really going out, it's also coming up. So once again, my range starts at zero and goes to infinity. Take a look at the domain for this guy. I stand at the origin, I look to the left, I don't see anything. When I turn and look to the right, I see that it goes on forever. And when I say to myself, where do I start, I realize that I'm starting at the origin, so that would be 0 to infinity. My range, on the other hand, as I look down, it goes on forever. Even though it's going out very quickly, it's also coming down. So it goes down to negative infinity. 
and same thing as I look up it goes to positive infinity now the irony of the situation is is that this guy this this number one this quadratic and this guy right here they're inverses of each other so you notice that it, when you're an inverse your x and your y switches we'll take a look at the domain which is your x your range which is your y your range which was your y your domain which is your x so those two are inverses of each other last but not least we have the absolute value function and so in the absolute value function um, we can see here that as we look at our domain we look off to the left I go to negative infinity oops I look off to the right I go to positive infinity I look at my range so that means I look down I don't see anything I look up I see stuff so I start at zero and I go to infinity. So that kind of takes a look at like the graphs, the basic functions, the shape of the basic functions, and then on top of that, what's their domain and range. Now, just real quickly at the end of this video, I want to throw out there that I hope you're starting to use your graphing calculator. I hope you're starting to go to your calculator and realize that you know if you come across a function, like we go back to this page, and you don't know what a x cubed function looks like, I hope you're going into your calculator and typing in x to the third power and then hitting graph and seeing what the shape of that graph looks like so you can start talking about the domain and range and different characteristics. Um, remember that if your window gets messed up when you're graphing something like this, remember we can go zoom and we can choose number six and that basically takes you to a 10 by 10 window. So we go back to our window and you can see now that it means that we go from negative 10 to 10 and 10, negative 10 to 10 going by ones because your scale is 1, your scale is 1. So when I look at this graph, I know this is negative 10, I know that's positive 10, and I know each one of these marks that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And same thing going up and down. So I want to make sure that we start using our calculator to plug things in and start looking at, at things and then our graphs and their shapes and stuff and then we'll be using that as we move through the class and actually the next couple of sections.